All right then, so now we've taken care of, I don't wanna say the boring parts of PHP, but the basics rather of PHP, we can start to move on and do some slightly more fun stuff and even start our very own Ninja Pizza project that we saw in the very first lesson of this series. So the first thing I wanna show you are two built-in PHP functions called include and require. And they both do essentially the same thing, but the way they react to errors is different and we'll see that shortly. But what they do is essentially require or include like the, the name of the function says another file into this file. So what I've already done is created this other file called ninjas.php right here. And it's just a simple bit of code. We've created a ninjas variable and that is an array with three elements. And then we're echoing position one, which is this right here from the array and a BR tag. Okay. So what I'd like to do now is include this file into this file right here. So I could say include and then in brackets, the path to that file in a string relative to this file. So it's just ninjas.php because we're in the same directory right here. And if I do that, then what it's gonna do is go out and grab this code, import it into this file and run it here, okay? Now I'm just gonna echo here, end of PHP, right? And we should see this code first, then this. So I've saved that, I'm gonna refresh over here and you can see now we get Ryu, then end of PHP. And we get Ryu because like I said, we've included this file into this file. So when we run it, it's echoing this thing right here, which is Ryu, okay? Then we're echoing this. So that is include. It allows us to go out, grab another file and include it in this file right here. Now the other function, require, does pretty much the same thing. So let's just require and then in brackets, ninjas.php okay so save that and we should see two rows on the page now one two cool because it's doing exactly the same thing okay so i did say there was a difference in how they react to errors so if i now let me just copy this and paste it down here then i'm going to change this to ninjas with two s's so obviously this file right here doesn't exist, right? So there should be some kind of error on the screen. And remember, we're still echoing this at the bottom. Now let me save that and refresh it. So we do get an error right here because obviously this file doesn't exist, but we still see end of PHP echoed to the screen. So it's carried on with the rest of the PHP, right? Now, if we change this to require, uh, require this file, which doesn't exist, save it we should still get an error, but notice now it's a fatal error and it's not gonna carry on with the rest of the code, okay? So whereas include carries on with the code, if there's an error trying to grab this file, require doesn't allow that, it doesn't carry on with the code. So that's the major difference there. Now you might also see these written like this without parentheses, and that's absolutely fine. That's gonna work as well, and we'll do the same with include. So include ninjas, PHP. They both work as well. It's just another way of writing this. Refresh and we see it's echoed twice. Okay. So you'll probably see this kind of code using require or include in things like WordPress themes to load in different parts of a template. And it's good because it allows us to modularize our code and reduces code repetition. For example, if we have a block of code that shows on every page of your website or several pages of your website, we don't have to manually code it on each of those pages. We can just code it once in an external file and then we can include or require it on each page that we want that code to appear on, right? Then when we need to update the code, we only have to do it once and it will update on all of those pages that includes or requires it. So simple example down here. I'm gonna create now another uh, file called content.php. And all I'm gonna do in here is a div and then inside that div, an h1, and we're gonna use some PHP here, so PHP tab, and then we're gonna echo some content. So imagine we want to add this content, I know it's not great at the minute, but to several different pages in the HTML template, then what we could do down here is we could include that or require it. So I'm just gonna use include, so I'll say PHP include, and we're gonna include the content, I'll use parentheses, content dot PHP. Okay, so save that and refresh and we can see some content right here now in the HTML. Now, like I said, we could do this multiple times. So I could do it two or three times and refresh over here. Now, if I want to update this, I don't have to update it 
three times. I just have to update it once and it's going to update all of these different instances where we include it. And these could all be on different pages. So that's why it's so powerful and so useful. So we're going to be doing something similar to this and using the power of this in the very next tutorial where we're going to start our Ninja Pizza project and create a nav bar and our footer templates.